shout out to the Point Place family. How y'all doing on this Tuesday, man? Tuesday, October the 22nd at 5.47 p.m. Tuesday night. Wow, man. Great things happening tonight. Shout out to the Point Place family. Bobby Reezy. Shout out to M. Breezy. Shout out to Naya Naya. Shout out to my sister. I love all y'all. Thank y'all for listening to the Point of View Point of view's coming back on a daily basis. Not only that, let me close it though. I hear a lot of racket in the background. Um, but the point is coming back. I'm back in the mix uh, just for the day. It will be back daily real soon. Ladies and gentlemen, I haven't forgotten about y'all. I'm not, I haven't forgotten about the people that I use to send this out to. I have not quit podcasting. I just was on delay for a little while trying to recover from an injury and the surgery I had. I'm still recovering from it. But thanks the Lord that I will be able to get through and get back to where I need to get in the point of view. So here it is. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight is the beginning of the NBA season. Regular season starts tonight with two big games coming on TNT. Uh, we're going to see the new crown NBA champion, Boston Celtics. Shout out to my boy Slate because that's his team. The Boston Celtics, once again, are the NBA champions. Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, the stars of that team. Jalen Brown went on Stephen A. Smith's podcast and really let them have it. They are trying to come against him. They're talking about he's a, they're talking about people don't think he's marketable. But I think Jalen Brown is marketable. I had a, 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 a conversation with one of my, well, with my lady friend about this yesterday. And I told her that Jason, she, she uh, we agree to disagree, but that's okay when it comes down to sports. I told her that Jalen Brown was the bigger star, and he was. Even though he didn't go to Team USA, he was the bigger star because uh, everybody's still thinking about Jason Tate. Let me tell you something. Jason Tatum is the bigger star at the time, but Jalen Brown was the bigger star in the playoffs. He had a better playoffs. He was holding, he was on defense, offense, and he was able to win both the Eastern Conference Finals MVP as well as the NBA Finals MVP. So Jalen Brown was the bigger, it was his season. And let me also say this too. He ended up getting the biggest deal of three million, three hundred million dollars. So yeah, Jalen Brown right now is the man. He's the star. Um, Black Wall Street in Oakland as well. So congratulations to him as they get themselves prepared for to to defend their NBA championship against a new ramp, new revamped version of the New York Knicks. Man. Um, with the addition of Carl Anthony Towns, Mikael Bridges, uh, and uh, the Villanova guys that are there. So we're going to see what happens with that. Actually, the, the Villanova guys are going to be in both games. Uh, but Boston and New York is going to be interesting. I think that New York could pull the shocker over Boston. A lot of people think Boston is probably going to win. Uh we just want to see what Carl Anthony Towns and those boys are going to do tonight with Jalen Bronson, you know, trying to get a shot at him becoming the MVP of the league. We'll see what happens. Uh, I will get into some other news that I heard earlier today um, that I heard people talk about on the sports outlets on online as well. Um, then I'll, I'll get into a little bit of wrestling from last night as well. And uh, try to figure out what NXT is going to do tonight as well. Because they come on in about an hour, in a little over an hour on C-Dub. Um, also, the, uh, the second game is, of course, the Lakers against the Timberwolves. We're going to see the debut probably of Bronny James playing tonight for a few. Not only that, but we also are going to see what else is going to happen with the new look Minnesota Timberwolves as they got Julius Randle and uh, uh, Dante DiFacenzo, who was also a part of the Villanova squad as well. Uh, 
going to be interesting to see what they do. The Lakers, same team basically for last year, but still got Bronny James. Uh, LeBron's got another year in him. Uh, and the Lakers are my team. So this is what I'm going to say about them. Can they get higher in the playoff bid? I think they can. Uh, I think that this is the year because we saw it last year, but we're going to see it again this year. Barn that AD gets injured, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be the huge, the huge situation here. Barring AD getting injured, the Lakers have a chance to make some noise in the Western Conference. And I will say this again. I want everybody to understand. Do they have enough to win a championship? I don't know. But I think LeBron's going to ride it out. He's in best shape coming off a gold medal, him and AD. And he's going up against Ant-Man, who also came off a gold medal win as well. Uh, And he was able to help get a gold medal along with LeBron and AD. So we're going to see those guys play against each other because they actually played against each other to start off the uh, preseason. Now they're playing against each other again in the regular season. And if you notice, the Phoenix Suns are also going to play them next, if I'm not mistaken, because that's another team that they played, what, twice in the preseason? KD against LeBron. Who's not going to want to see that? It's interesting to see what they're going to look like this year. Let me let me get to the elephant in the room. And I didn't know this, and, 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 and it's my fault because I haven't been keeping up with the NBA storylines because I've been too busy looking at the WNBA storylines as well as the football. And I'll talk about the game last the two games last night as well between the Cardinals and the Chargers and, of course, the Baltimore Ravens destroying my boy Baker Mayfield and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Let me talk about the Philadelphia 76ers. You guys went out there and Daryl Morley went and broke the bank to try to get the best available players in free agency and trade. I think he, I think he did most of it free agency to get the guys to come and play to help Joel and B and Tyrese Maxey try to win an NBA championship. Guess what happens? Joel and Big went to France and won a gold medal with LeBron, AD, and KD, and all, and Steph, and all those boys. Joel and Big played. Now that the season is starting, you're not playing. And you're telling people that. You don't know if you're going to play back-to-backs this year. Then Paul George goes out in a preseason game. Let me tell you something. Paul George should have played for like three minutes and should have sat down. They should have put him out there for three minutes, let him got two or three points, and let him sat down. And let him ride out the rest of the preseason. Because look at what's happening now. He's hurt, and he hasn't even played a season yet. He hasn't even played in the regular season. It's tough. It's a tough situation. Uh, they're not going to. They're not going to be competitive like that because there's a lot of things that can go wrong with this. You could put him back in the lineup at times, and they their chemistry may be off, and it may throw off the chemistry of the team. And I will give you this, and this is what's going to happen. On the back side, and I heard somebody else say this, and I, and I do believe I agree with the 100% because the people that said this are actual, actual players that played in the league. So if I'm going to say something, I'm going to say what they said because I know that they know the game better than me from being out on the hardwood in the NBA as a pro player. 
This is what's going to happen. If Philly is trying to make a playoff push, and if Joel Embiid and Paul George are healthy and they're going to need them in a back-to-back game, guess what's going to happen? They're going to get thrown out there. They're going to be out there to play because Maxi is going to be the star of the team when Joel and Big is not playing or Paul George. And that's the thing that he, Paul George, left the Clippers for. It's a money, yeah, it was a money situation, but it was also because of Kawhi Leonard not playing at times. You left a team that had four all-stars on the team. You, Kawhi, James Harden, and Russell, and Russell Westbrook. There's only two of those guys still left on that team. You decide to go to Philly because Embiid was trying to pull you during the NBA Finals. Philly broke the bank on you to give you a shot. And you're not even playing right now? And I know that Paul George is suffering because he broke his leg during the Olympics uh, uh, a while back. And I know how he feels about that. Joel Embiid has been injured ever since he's been in the league. So because of him being tall and, and, and big, it's too much weight on his foot. That's why he stay hurt. Because he's tall and, 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 he's, and he weights a lot of uh, pounds. You know, when you're tall like that, it's, it's also when you're, when you're that tall at times, it can be a problem because you can have problems with your feet and your legs. Um, if you don't believe me, Yao Ming was one of them. Kevin Garnett and Tim Duncan got blessed. They didn't have to have that problem. But guys that are just real tall and big like that, that's why Shaq stayed hurt a lot. People don't understand that Shaq stayed hurt a lot because he was one for one. He was big. But another reason why was because he was so tall. So, yeah, that 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 happens to a lot of people in the league where they in, where injuries cut them short. I hope that Wimby can play for at least 10 seasons. I don't want him getting hurt and all that there. So, you know, my prayers go with Paul George. I'm hoping that he can be able to bounce back him and uh, Joel. Can, can bounce back and help Philly. They they want to help Philly win a championship. They were one of the, the top four teams. I thought they could do it. But now I'm looking at uh, Orlando Magic could, could could come in and the Pacers could come in and take that, that top four spot because you already know who it's going to be. Boston, New York, Milwaukee, Philly, if, if they don't play – if Philly comes out like gangbusters, then they'll probably be the fourth best team in the East. But I'm looking at Orlando Magic, who I think, who could have gotten out of the first round last year if they would have had home court advantage against Cleveland. And also I'm looking at a Cleveland team that could possibly make some noise if they decide to keep their team together. Because I'm going to tell you something. I think, I think Darius Garland is going to be traded by all-star break. I, I could be wrong about it, but I'm literally not seeing Darius Garland play for them after this season. I think after this season, Garland's gone. I know he got a, like a, a, what, two, three years left on his deal or something like that. I think he's there for at least two more years, but I think he's going to be gone because it's obvious that they don't see too much market in him. They, the way that he play, he plays great. Don't get me wrong. But Mitchell is, 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 is their franchise right now. So we'll see what happens with that. We'll see what happens with Philly and how they run. Um, I'm just naming a, a, a couple of teams that I, I'm going to keep an eye on. Um, the Warriors is going to be one team I'm going to keep an eye on. I'm, I want to see how the Warriors come out post clay season. Uh, they gave Steph the extension. So Steph Curry is probably going to retire as a Golden State Warrior. That's going to be one of the biggest moves right there because he's not going to go anywhere else. I thought that Draymond Green was going to be out and with the Lakers, but I don't think that's going to happen now. I think Draymond's probably going to stay with Golden State until he retires. Um, Clemenga 
is a guy that's probably going to be a, a trade piece because they did, he did not re-sign the extension with the Warriors. So the Warriors are probably going to try to give him a bigger deal or they're going to try to move him. And I think they're probably going to move him because Golden State is going to be in subpar rebuilding mode, guys. They're going to try to rebuild around Steph and Draymond. Uh, I think they need to make a move and try to get some of those old pieces that they got out of there. Uh, Kevon Looney, I don't think you move him. I think he stays. Uh, like some of those guys, like like young Brandon, I think he he's going to be the, the next Clay Thompson if he can get himself together and get himself back, you know, play a little better. I think I think he has the upside to him. Um, of course, Steph is going to be Steph. Draymond's going to be Draymond. Andrew Wiggins, man, is a big if, man, because sometimes Wiggins, and I like Wiggins because Wiggins can play. When his head on it, when his head is into the game, he's one of the best players in the game. He's a tremendous defender and all those things right there. But my thing is, why do you have so many DMPs? Why do you have so much? And I understand. We all go through situations with family. We all have to, you know, do what we got to do for family and things like that. But sometimes it looks like his head is just not into the game. And this is from a fan's perspective. This is not from somebody that watched Andrew Wiggins on the court because I'm not there on the court with him. But you in television land, you can see things before, you know, and say, man, that dude looks like he ain't into it. But I, but Wiggins is a guy I think they can make a trade piece for. I, I would love to see him in L.A. with LeBron and, and A.D. Of course, you're going to have to give up some guys. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, it's 6.04. Also, I want to see what's going to happen with the Miami Heat this year. That's another team I'm looking at. They're, why they didn't trade Tyler Hero last season. I think they will trade Tyler Hero during the All-Star break if the Heat don't make no noise. And the reason why I'm saying this is because I know that Jimmy Butler and them don't want to be at the bottom of the totem pole. I know they want to be up. I think that they could also be one of those top tier four teams that could take Philly out if Philly doesn't do anything as of right now. That's just my that's my thought on that. I will say that as well. Uh, do you trade Jimmy Butler? A lot of people think they should trade the the Heat should trade Jimmy Butler. A lot of people think that Jimmy has worn his welcome out in Miami. He's been there for like what four or five years, something like that. He was able to get the Heat to the championship twice, but they didn't win. Four years ago, they lost to the Lakers, LeBron James and AD. You know, ain't nobody on that team that's with the Lakers now that was there four years ago except for AD and LeBron. Nobody was on that team that won back in 2020. Not only that, um, Miami's been there within the last two, three years. They are a team that sneaks up and wins the uh wins the Eastern Conference when people don't expect it to happen, they do. Jimmy was not able to get those boys over the hump. And and I know that's driving him because he's had two opportunities to win a championship and he hasn't done it. But I think his time in Miami is up. I think it's time for him to uh go somewhere else. I don't think he needs to be in Miami anymore. I don't think that's gonna that's where he needs to be. I think he needs to be on another team or something like that. That's just my that's just my thoughts about it. Um, I think Tyler Hero and Duncan Robinson will probably be trade pieces this year. Um, shout out to my boy K Love, who's still in the league. Kevin Love still playing strong in the NBA. I think he's been in the league now what over seventeen years, something like that. Kevin Love, a former NBA champion with LeBron and, and Kyrie. So that's going to be interesting to see what Miami does. That's another team I'm looking out for. I'm not looking out for Dallas because I know Dallas is probably going to have a chance to get back to the NBA Finals. They'll probably be one of the top four teams in the Western Conference. But the thing about Dallas is if Luka does not start learning how to play defense, then Dallas is going to be in trouble. 
the, last year, if Klay Thompson was on that team last year, the Celtics probably would have still won the championship, but the series would have been a little more competitive than five, okay? Get what I'm saying? And uh, that, that's just uh, a thought of what I'm saying about them. Also, I, I'm, I'm looking at it at the New Orleans Pelicans, and I want to see what is going to happen this year with Zion as well as the other guys that are on the field as well, on the court, excuse me. And I'm talking about guys like what they're going to do with Brandon Ingram, uh, what can Deontay Murray bring to the team, how is him and CJ going to going to get along in the in the backcourt. Um, you got rid of some of your players. You lost Valachunas, uh, Dyson Daniels. Uh, you got uh, you lost Larry Nash Jr. You still got um, both Murray and Herb. So we'll see what happens with those guys in New Orleans. Hopefully New Orleans can bounce back and get themselves back into a mix of trying to get back into the playoffs. Those are some of the teams. Uh, Phoenix with KD, Booker, and Bill. Barring that they don't get injured, I think Booker and Bill and uh, KD could possibly be up there at the top of the mountain as well as one of the top four teams in the Western Conference. Uh, that's just me, you know, my my uh, uh, predictions on that. As well, those are some of the teams that I'm looking at. I want to know what Atlanta's going to do now. Trey Young is still there. He didn't leave Atlanta. Uh, what can they do now with um, Murray leaving? What can they bring? What can he can he get it back to where he needs it? Him and Capella and those boys. Uh a lot of great teams. Milwaukee with Middleton out already. Chris Middleton is, is stay hurt, man. But with him out, can Dame and 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 Giannis get the 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 Bucks to the NBA Finals? Could happen. We'll see. We'll see what happens with that as well. Uh, but guys, in about twenty minutes, the NBA is going to come on the ring ceremony. Is going to um, be. Be great, be good, um, and things like that. Um, also, I heard them talk about LeBron and how is he going to come out this season. There's going to be nights that LeBron's going to rest. He's not going to play. Uh, I don't think LeBron's going to play a, a lot of back-to-back -back games. He should. I think he will. Uh, I think there's going to be certain games against certain teams where he's not going to play. Or if they want him to play, put him in for a few minutes and then sit him down. I think you need to manage LeBron's minutes. LeBron should not be playing over 30 to 35 minutes a game. I think you should put LeBron at at least 29 minutes a game and just trust your team to do the rest. He's in year 22. He's almost 40. Michael Jordan did it at 40. But LeBron can also do it at 40. We'll see what happens with LeBron, ladies and gentlemen, as he uh, enters year 22. Not only that, um, let's switch in gear. Let's switch the gear, excuse me, to uh, football. Last night, man, the Baltimore Ravens just destroyed Baker Mayfield and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, man. Man, that freight, that freight train called uh, Derrick Henry. 169 yards rushing. At first, he wasn't doing anything, but he broke loose. He broke loose, guys, and they couldn't stop him. They couldn't stop him. And let me say this here. If Mike Evans and Chris Godwin are injured, the Buccaneers season is over. And excuse me, I'm gonna tell you this. I'm gonna tell you why I say that. Because Baker's not gonna have anybody else to throw the ball to. If Godwin, well, Kay Oden is still there. He's still healthy, tight end. But if Baker does not have Godwin or Mike Evans, the season's over. The Saints could possibly have a chance then, but the Falcons are just kicking butt right now, man. The Falcons are going to win that division. 
I, I, I don't want to say they're not, but I do believe it's looking like the Falcons are going to win that division. I think the Saints, it, it depends on Derek Carr has to change it around. If he can change it around before December, then they have a chance. But I just don't see it happening, folks. I think the Saints is going to have a wash season again this year. That's just my thought on it. I, I, I don't want to say it. But unless Derek Carr comes back and they go on like a five, six game winning streak, the Saints are washed. They're going to be just like my Patriots, sitting at home again looking for a high draft pick. Um, the Cardinals and the Chargers was a low scoring game, but Kyler Murray looked it great. The kicker was able to win the game for them. It's a great thing. Also, ladies and gentlemen, let me say this before I go to wrestling. Cooper Cup is being shot by the Rams. Where do you think Cooper Cup's going to go? My thing is the Saints could use him. He doesn't need to go to the Patriots. The Buffalo Bills just picked up Amari Cooper. The Dallas Cowboys could use him. And I hate to say that. The Philadelphia Eagles could use him. If they had Cooper Cup with Jalen Hurts and Smith and Brown and those boys and Goddard and those boys, the Philadelphia Eagles would be in the Super Bowl. In the Super Bowl. They would exactly be in the Super Bowl because I think with all that, but that's just me hypothetically speaking. Right now, the Celtics and the Knicks are in a in a great game. I've seen some threes already shot by Boston. Bronson looks like he's going to heat up a little bit. But um, let me switch gears to wrestling for a minute. Let me talk about last night, Monday Night Raw. It's going to be interesting because the Final Testament is going to probably be feuding with the White Six. This is going to be interesting. You're going to have, Car- from where it's looking like, it's going to be Karen Cross going up against Uncle Howdy. This is a great rivalry if this is what's going to happen. But, man, I'm telling you, Karen Cross, this is his chance to go above the water now and do what he needs to do. So that will be interesting to keep an eye on that along with our truth and Miz still feuding as well. I'm going to get to the big match in a minute. And what I see, Seth Rollins and Bronson Reed tore each other up last night. Great, great rivalry they're going to have. I think that you're going to see the best of Seth Rollins and Bronson Reed. I think that Bronson Reed is probably going to lose to Seth Rollins at Crown Jewel. But if I am WWE... And if I want to make a bigger story out of this and make this like a three-match series or something like that, I let I let Bronson Reed beat Seth Rollins at Crown Jewel. Also, the NBA Cup is going to come back starting November 12th, the NBA Cup, which the Lakers won last year. Uh, but my thing is this. I think that Bronson Reed would fit the bill as one of the best in the business if they let him go over on Seth Rollins. That's what I think it could happen. I think that could happen. I don't know if anybody else would agree with me on that, but I think that could happen where Bronson Reed could be the big fish in the tank and come up with a big win over Seth Rollins at, at the pay-per-view of crown jewel. Um, also, uh, we saw the New Day win their tag match. We also saw um, we also saw Rey Mysterio and Dragon Lee won their match. Great matches with those guys. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see. It's going to be the War-, War Raiders versus Dragon Lee, Rey Mysterio, <laughs> Rey Mysterio, and Dragon Lee. Uh, and the New Day in the triple threat match uh, to go up against the Judgment Day. Uh, that's next week on Raw. 
SmackDown is also doing it. I do believe that whoever wins these tag team tournaments will possibly become the next tag team champions on both sides. It's time for the Bloodline as well as the Judgment Day to lose the tag team titles. I think it's time for the shut them down. They've had a great run. I think that Tona, to, Tama Tonga and Ta, Tonga Lo have had the titles for a minute now. I think it's time to take the belts off of them because they can still be the big man on campus without the titles. And this is another reason why I'm going to say what I'm going to say in a minute about the other guys and about the other match that happened as well. Um, not only that, Rhea Ripley uh, came out and got at Raquel and Liv uh, as they went up against Damage Control. Now, don't get me wrong, man. I think that Liv and um, Raquel could fit the bill as the women's tag team champions again. Liv is on the tirade as the as the world as the world women's champion, which is one of the best things she's got going on right now. Her career has been rejuvenated since she uh, won the women's title earlier this year in the summer. I think it was for the summer when she beat Becky Lynch to become the champion. Um, but Liv has had a great run as women's champion. I don't think you put that title on Rhea Ripley as of right now, and I'll tell you why. Rhea Ripley is over without winning the women's title. Now, if she was to go to SmackDown, let me say this. If she was to go to SmackDown, she would have a, a hell of a run as the women's as the WWE Women's Champion, as the SmackDown Women's Champion. But on Raw, she doesn't need that right now. And I, and I still say this because there needs to be somebody on the under challenging Liv Morgan. They're not utilizing the women that are under under to have a shot at that. If Jay Cargill would go to SmackDown or go to Raw as a as a single star, then I think Jay Cargill would be the one that they would push to the top. Right now, they are just taking the rocket with Liv Morgan and uh, Nia Jax. And I'm I'm gonna say this about her because I think that her winning the King of the Ring, the Queen of the Ring, excuse me was what she needed in her career because Nia Jax has had a, a, a nice little run as the champion so far. And for that, I will, I will give her res, her respects because she deserves that. She deserves that part of what she did. And she came back and when they came back, they told her, we're going to, we're going to let you have a run as a women's champion. And that's why I, I think that Nia Jax deserves her flowers right now. She has not been cashed on or nothing like that. So that's that's good for business to see her go through that right now. And, you know, there's no disrespect to all the other ladies, but Nia Jax gets her flowers. Now, I'm going to tell you somebody else that I think needs to get their flowers, and that's Naomi. I think Naomi should have got her flowers as well. Because I think that, Naomi, and believe it or not, when I say this, I think Naomi should be a women's world champion again. That's my that's my book, my story in my book, because I think that she's one of the most athletic women on the roster. And as pure athlete, at pure, pure athlete, Naomi's that. Naomi, has, she's so pure in the ring, she reminds me of Shelton Benjamin. She's like the the woman version of Shelton Benjamin in the ring, you know, and I, and I said that a lot of people thought I was crazy when I said this, but I'm saying this for a reason because Shelton Benjamin has good God, man. This man is like almost 50 and ain't no stopping him. Still Shelton Benjamin is something serious, man. And we're going to find that out tomorrow because Shelton Benjamin is going to be in action against Sammy Kavara. But we saw exactly what he did to Leo Rush last week. Man, he literally destroyed Leo Rush in the ring, man. 
Leo Rush looked like he had a concussion and everything, bro. But that's Sheldon Benjamin, man. Sheldon Benjamin is something serious. So with that being said, also, um, I want to talk about the other, you know, the matches that they did have on Raw. And I'm hating that it's a, a two-hour show because a lot of people are not getting getting what they need to get. Tonight on NXT, you're going to see Damage Control go one-on-one -on -one team up in a tag match against um, – Against your girls, um, Lash Legend and Jakar Jackson, excuse me. My voice is so tongue twisted, but I'm trying to get it together. But uh, Jakar Jackson, Lash Legend versus um, Damage Control tonight on, on NXT on C-Dub. Uh, last night they attacked Damage Control I don't know if they're pushing them to be – I think they're pushing them to put them on the main roster because I think they will fit the bill on the main roster on either show they're on. That's just my thoughts on that. I think that I think that Jakar Jackson and Lash Legend could be, be some great WWE Women's Tag Team Champions. My thing about this is, though, why did you take away the NXT Women's Tag Team titles? Why did you absorb those titles – when you put those titles on the team of Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler and Shayna Baszler and Ronda Rousey was only a tag team for only a month. You, why did you not go ahead on and do that before then, you know, and that's the thing that I'm trying to figure out. That's the thing that the, the, the whole secular world in professional wrestling is trying to figure out. Why did you do that? See NXT, women's division if i'm sean michaels if i'm triple h if i'm ava if i'm nick khan and all the powers to be that are in nxt i would tell them hey bring back the women's tag team titles because you need that now you have women's teams that can do something the the, the team of of jc jane and Fallon and Fallon henley that's a tag team. You could put those girls in the ring. You could put Lola Vice in the ring with, with um, Nakia Lyons. Make a tag team out of them. You could put uh, Rosemary and Wendy Chu in a, if you want Rosemary to keep coming from TNA to WWE NXT. You could put them in a tag team. You know, and it's things like that that is just what I don't, I'm baffled about at wrestling sometimes because they make decisions that are sometimes not good for business. The Celtics are just shooting all these three pointers, man. The Celtics are really killing the Knicks with the three ball. The Knicks, they got to stay in this game because if they don't, they're going to be out of this thing real fast. Uh, but I'm saying this and I'm saying this for a reason because the thing about it is they've got to figure out, they've got to figure out a way to make something happen. They got to figure it out because you are trying to elevate. You want to elevate the women's, which nobody has a problem with. You're supposed to have the women's built to build them up in the business. But where you're messing up at is this is where you're messing up at. You're messing up because you're not giving the women's the fair shake. Why take the NXT women's tag team titles when they had a successful run as women tag team champions? You've got enough women's on that roster on NXT that you can make a women to bring back the women's NXT tag team titles. You this year, you just made a women's North American champion to match the W the, the WWE NXT women's title. So why not give the women's a NXT tag team title back? You should, you should do it. I think it's best for business. There's a lot of people online that triple H see these ideas and he needs to figure out what they need to do to do this. There is another another issue that's happening. Where are the mid-card women's titles? 
women's could be the, the women's intercontinental champion, the women's U.S. champion. The game, 2K, has been doing it for the last two or three years. So what's going on now with it? Makes a lot of sense. Spurs, Mavericks, Thursday. Thunder, Nuggets, Thursday. I forgot who plays tomorrow. Um, I think one of them is the 76ers, if I'm not mistaken. But back to what I was saying about wrestling. You got to have, you got to know how to make your, your Jason Tatum is downtown killing, man. Jason Tatum has hit at least two or three three-pointers already. Boston is six from 11 from downtown in the first quarter. My God, I'm telling you, this is going to be a long call. That, if Carl Anthony Towns is not in the game, um, Knicks just missed a alley hoop. Derek White going for threes. But that's the thing that I, I want to see happen more. And that's giving women's a shot. I think AEW is gonna make an AEW women tag team tag team title soon because TNA has the knockout tag team titles, WWE has the women's tag team titles, AEW is the 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 other the third not the third brand but they are the second brand of competition. But I think the second brand of competition, which is AEW. Is going to end up having an AEW women's tag team title. Jason Tatum is killing these guys, man. Jason Tatum has hit at least four three pointers, man. Jason Tatum has 15 points in the first quarter, folks. And Jason Tatum is hitting threes after threes after threes. Wow. He's doing what he got to do. Jason Tatum also has a, proved, a point to prove, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm going to tell you what it is. He's not happy about what happened to him in the Olympics. I don't care what anybody says. He was not happy about what happened with the Olympics when Steve Kerr did not play him. And I don't care what anybody says. He got a gold medal, which is his second. But he did not feel like he was used, which he wasn't. So we'll see what happens with that. Jason Tatum is on a mission to get some respect back in his name. Like he don't already have it. <laughs> but uh, back to wrestling, man. I'm going to say this and then I'm going to close up shop in a little while. Um, so with that being said, let me get into one of the main event situations I want to talk about. And we know about the situation with Gunther talking about Cody. Gunther's gonna see Go um Gunther's gonna see um Cody this, this coming Friday on SmackDown. Shout out to Paul Pierce. Paul Pierce is in the building. Paul Pierce, I guess he left FS1 <laughs> to come to Boston to watch the Celtics celebration of a championship. Paul Pierce, one of the greatest players to ever play the game of basketball was able to get Boston the championship back in 2008 when they beat Kobe and the Lakers to win. Carl Anthony Towns back in the game. Uh, we're seeing what's happening here. Good steal. Great steal by Holiday. Layup by Holiday. Drew Holiday was very important last year in the NBA playoffs as well as being one of those defending guards. Um He's also a two-time gold medalist, if I'm not mistaken, and also a two-time NBA champion. So Drew Holiday knows exactly what it is. Uh, he knows how to win. Good three-pointer there by McBride. I'm just giving you guys some some play calling right now on the Lake on the not Lakers, but on the Knicks and the Celtics. McBride with the shot, three-pointer contact. Yes, four-point play he has. Coming up, uh, that's a that's a that's a foul. That's a foul. McBride was able to hit the three pointer, so McBride goes to the line, misses the free throw, so he only gets the three out of it, and not the four point play. Um, switching gears back to wrestling, um, I want to talk about the main event, of course. Uh, also, Xavier. Uh, Woods with the 
with the not helping our truth get beat up and another three-pointer by the Boston Celtics. This time it's Drew Holiday and Tibbs looking like, what's going on? They are 8 for 14 from downtown Boston. And how are you going to beat that when you had a team shooting threes like that? But anyway, um, back to what I was saying. Back to what I was saying about the main event. Main event last night was, of course, Jay Uso versus Brock Breaker for the Intercontinental title. I know a lot of us are kind of pissed that Braun Breaker did win the Intercontinental title back. And Jay Uso had it and lost it for a month. Let, let me let me break down why I think what happened was happening. Boston again with another three-pointer. Man, that's like nine threes, man. They have shot nine three-pointers. In the first quarter, man. And they are beating the Celtics. The Celtics are beating them by 18 points in the first quarter, man. Pritchard got the ball. Pritchard with the layup. Pritchard comes back. Gives it to Holiday. Holiday misses, but he gets a look like an offensive foul, goaltend, or something like that. But anyway, let me tell you guys why I think Jay Uso should be not discouraged about losing the Intercontinental title. So it's 20 to 40. They're up by 20 at the end of the first quarter. Um, They want to, to put the rocket on the back of Braun Breaker, and they want to put the monkey wrench in Jey Uso. And I'm going to tell you exactly why they did that. Because they right now see more value in in Braun Breaker as being the Intercontinental Champion than Jey Uso. I thought, and this is why I said this, Jey Uso and Seth Rollins would have been a great push and a great program for the Intercontinental title. This is not what we all wanted to happen. We knew that it was a possibility that Braun Breaker was going to win the Intercontinental title back. Right out the fadeaway, me and him was talking about it yesterday. Last night I said, man, this is going to go bad for Jay. I don't think Jay's going to win this match. I think Jay is going to lose because of the fact that they wanted Braun Breaker back at the hem of the mid-card as the Intercontinental champion. Because here's why. Braun Breaker can make matches with other guys that are trying to get up the mid card. Since they wanted that, and I'm saying that this could have happened with Jay Uso too, but this is what they want. The reason why they want Jay come off the Intercontinental title because they want Jay to get back into the mix with the bloodline. They want to tie him back up with Roman Reigns and the and Jimmy Uso to fight against Solo and Jacob Fatu and Tonga Lo and Tama Tonga. Now, if the rumors are straight and if the rumors are correct, next month will be at the Survivor Series, it will be the Bloodline War Games, which will be Roman Reigns, which will be Jey Uso, which will be Jimmy Uso, the original the original bloodline against Solo and probably either Jacob Fatu, Tama Toga, and of course Tonga Loga, but Tama Tonga. And I will say this, they will end up getting somebody to be on their side. Will that be Seth Rollins? I don't know. But I will say this, there's a possibility it could be Sami Zayn grouping back up with them again. Who knows? It could be Sammy's not been on Raw since losing to Gunther. And I think Sammy's taking a break because they don't know what to do with him right now. But here's what I do think they should do with him. He should be trying to figure out what's next in his career. Because I think Sammy Zayn had a great year. Again, this Sammy Zayn has had, let me me say this, then I'll get back to about Jay and, and, and Braun. Sami Zayn has had the last two years 
of his career, Sami Zayn has had two of the best years in wrestling. And I will say this, and I'll tell you why I'm saying this. Here's why I'm saying it. <laughs> At WrestleMania, he became the WWE undisputed tag team title champion with Kevin Owens, okay? That was a WrestleMania moment that he got. This past WrestleMania, in one of the biggest shocks that people thought was never happened, he was able to beat Gunther to become the Intercontinental Champion. Nobody expected Sami Zayn to beat Gunther. I said it. I called it a while back. I say, man, Sami Zayn is going to be the one that beats Gunther for the Intercontinental title at WrestleMania. And I said this like two months before the match even happened at WrestleMania because of the way that they were marketing the situation. That's why I said it. Now, let's get back to Jey Uso. So they take the title off him because he had a, a month reign. Let me tell you all this. Jey Uso is over, matter, no matter if he has a title or not. He's over with the fans. People are still going to be yeeting and things like that. Now he has to deal with the bloodline. So we'll see what happens with that. You know, in the upcoming in the upcoming weeks, as we get ready for a uh, Survivor Series, now on the Braun Breaker, this is gonna make Braun Breaker either be a great babyface or a great heel. And when I say a great heel, I'm gonna tell you why I'm saying this, because Braun Breaker, and this is what people don't understand about this. He can make Dominique, Dominique Mysterio a champion. He can make a match with Sheamus. He can get in the ring with all the mid-card guys now that can make something happen. So that's why they put the title back on him because of that. And with that being said, I'm going to yield, and I'll talk to you guys tomorrow with Wednesday's point of view. God bless you. God keep you.